Welcome to Studio The Sword. My name is Lina and today's video is an episode number six of my winter series where I'm showing you polymer clay tutorials and today's video is going to be about wine glass tags, how you can make your own at home. So let's get started. If you want to support me and my channel, don't forget to hit red button to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment down below and let's keep going. First thing that I'm doing as usual is creating draft on paper and I decided to do four different wine glass tags and you can see I'm gonna do like a snowflake, then a deer, Christmas tree and a sock. After that I'm picking the clay colors for the project. Mostly I'm gonna be using white clay and also shimmery white clay. Also I decided that the base for my wine tags is gonna be all the same and now I'm preparing the base color. For that I'm mixing a regular white clay with a translucent shimmery one. It's gonna create a really nice effect in the future. So what I'm doing is warming up both clays, after that dividing them into the pieces that just to create kind of like a marble effect, but it's not really a marble effect. It's just gonna create layers and that's what we need. When my base is done, I pin this on a side and start working on a first piece. And the first thing that I'm doing is snowflake. And I decided to use a cane technique for the snowflake. I've never done this before. I've done other kind of canes and the cane is pretty much one of the most challenging things for me because it requires a lot of attention to like small tiny details for the whole thing to come out really nice. So for the snowflake cane I'm gonna use white clay. I'm gonna take a piece from the base. Don't do that. <laughs> it's like uh, me from the future saying that. Uh, I did take this mixed base color for my snowflake. I should have done that. I should have just taken the plain white clay. I think that would give me better results. But anyway, taking the mixed base color and then I'm also creating gradient effect for the blue color. And my blue colors are transparent. That's gonna create also a little bit translucent effect when the clay is baked but for now I'm creating the gradient effect and for that I'm just dividing my two shades of blue into little pieces like little squares and after that I'm cutting my squares diagonally and adding the cut side uh, to each other kind of sticking them together then going over with the rolling pin and after that I'm using my pasta machine to create the gradient effect.
All right, now my gradient is ready. My base color, I'm shaping into like a cylinder shape. After that, I'm adjusting the size of the blue color because it's gonna go on top of the cylinder. So what I'm doing is taking my base, applying this to the blue color and just measuring the size and cutting the accent. Making sure that the blue layer is attached and stuck to the base. After that, we're cutting the base in half. Now I'm taking my blue clay that is already flattened on a minimum thickness and I'm cutting six different stripes. So the first two stripes is going to be a larger size, a little bit wider, and the rest four are going to be a little bit smaller. I'm taking the bigger size stripe and attaching it to the sides of the base, cutting off the axis and putting my base back together and sure that the two parts are again stuck to each other or kind of glued to each other. So now I'm doing extra cuts. So we have the middle cut and after that I have two more cuts on each side. After I cut those sides, now I'm again adding those stripes on our inner side of the part, of the cutted part. And now, as you can see, I have three parts from one side and three parts on the other side. And in between those, we have those stripes. And what we're doing now, it's making sure to like pull them together so they like completely attach to each other. And I'm doing that by like pushing it toward each other, but also we need to push it really accurate so we don't mess up the lines. Okay, now when all the pieces stuck back together, we cutting it in half and now taking those half spheres and turning them into the triangle. Now I'm making sure the two triangle shapes are the same length and now we're dividing each of them in three parts. So in the end, you need to have uh, six equal size pieces. Now I'm taking extra white clay and rolling this into like a little thread shape uh, and that's going to be a center of our snowflake. Putting this in the middle and start attaching our triangle pieces together. What's important here is not to mess up the lines so all the lines has to stay like in a straight so that's gonna create a better snowflake and now it's the step where i'm pushing all of the colors together i'm starting from like the center and pushing it outwards that's gonna like reduce the size it's also gonna make the pattern all right and now we can check the result by cutting our cane to be honest i didn't like a this pattern that came out in a cane. I also tried to do two other attempts to create the cane and I didn't like um, neither of them. 
so I decided to stick with the first one. So what I'm doing now is cutting little slices out of the cane and applying them to the base and after that just like pushing it with the rolling pin and cutting up the shape of the future wine glass tag. All right, and here's the second design that I'm gonna make. It's gonna be the Christmas tree. For that, I'm taking the green color and flattening it into the thread shape, like a really, really thin one. I could have used my extruder, but I just decided to do it on my own. Now I'm taking the base and applying my cutter on top just to see the size so i'm kind of like stamping it a little to see like the size of the cutter and how big my christmas tree is supposed to be and now i'm taking the little pieces of the green clay out of this thread shape piece making one of the sides even a little bit smaller and just start applying from the bottom to the top When my Christmas tree is ready, I'm just taking yellow and red colors to add on some ornaments on it. After that, I'm just cutting out the shape and it's all ready. The next piece I'm doing is going to be the sock. For that, I'm taking red clay and I want to add some texture to it. So, as usual, I'm taking some fabric, adding it on top, pushing it with some rolling pin so the texture transfers to the clay. And that's what I'm going to be using. After that, I'm just cutting out the sock shape out of the red clay and applying this on top of my base. On top of that, I'm adding some fur to the top of the sock and again, it's a white clay and I'm just adding on and to create a fur texture or a fluffy texture, I'm just using my needle and loosening the surface. Also, the extra detail I want to add to my sock is going to be a snowflake for that I'm again using white color and just flooding into thread shape on a like super super thin one and just applying lines to the sock. And the last wine tag is going to be with a deer head. For that, I'm going to be using two sheets of the brown clay um, and the cutter. If you don't have a cutter, you can just cut out the paper stencil and use it. So I'm taking the darker shade of brown and cutting out the shape and then cutting like almost half of that because it's gonna be like a mouth area that's gonna be in a different shade. Cutting out the horns and the ears. Also, I'm cutting off the red nose. It's gonna be a pretty big one. After I attach the nose, I'm attaching the eyes. So I'm taking white, making like a bigger circles and applying them like on top next to the nose. And just after that, I'm adding like a little dots of the black color.
And when all of my four pieces are ready, I start baking them. Don't forget to look up instructions on the packages of your clay. My clay is gonna be in the oven for 30 minutes. After my pieces are baked, I'm just sanding the edges a little bit, making the holes. And after that, I'm using some hoop earrings base and just gonna add on some beads to them. And here's my final result. This is how it's gonna look like. You also can make them smaller or bigger. It really depends on how big your glasses are. But I think that's gonna be pretty visible on a potty so you won't lose your glass. And also share with me in the comments below if you like this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and we see each other in the next video.